Oh, so today I'm going to talk about hipsters. And America loves to hate the hipster. I mean, liberal NPR pundits hate hipsters. Your conservative grandpa hates hipsters. Hipsters don't want to be hipsters. But what I'm going to argue today is that hipsters' consumptive hacks, the way that they approach economics, especially in the consumptive sphere, are very, very useful. And they've helped a lot of non-hipsters hack consumption. I started thinking about hipsters because I've been working for two years as a research assistant on Julie Shore's Connected Learning uh, Research Network project on connected consumption. Maybe you've heard of some of the connected consumption initiatives like Airbnb and Relay Rides, which give access to goods without ownership over them. Some nonprofit initiatives like swapping networks and barter networks that I've been looking at are really heavily populated by hipsters. And I got to thinking, so what about these new old practices like canning and bartering and knitting lead to hacking consumption through remixing, through insourcing, and through guerrilla tactics? And today I'm gonna really dive into these three main topics to discuss how hipsters penchant for self-presentation on the web through Instagram and through Tumblr and through Twitter in the corner has really allowed many non-hipsters to remake the way that they approach consumption, especially as it relates to these three topics that I've, I've divorced from the stylistic practices of hipsters. So first up, we've got remixing. And what remixing does is it really de-links large-scale production from small-scale consumer. And what it does instead is it privileges producers who are also consumers, and it decreases the distance between producer and consumer, making those exchanges, especially in the service venue, local exchanges. Online Life facilitates this through trust and reputation metrics. A lot of connected consumption initiatives feature this. Up next is insourcing. And insourcing is really a reaction formation among hipsters and others to the outsourcing trend where more and more of our lives on a daily basis are purview of the market, especially when it comes to service providers. So a rising collective of DIY hipsters and hacksters who don't want to be associated with hipsters are swapping goods and services. Even more than market fatigue, other people are having anti-capitalist sentiment, especially as it relates to the consumer machine. They're enacting guerrilla tactics, whether it's dumpster diving or extreme couponing in, from places as disparate as Portland and Tulsa um, to take small chunks away from big box change. This really takes away from the power of the chain and the brand. So what's going on here again? All right, Pierre Bourdieu would say hipster habitus or hipster structuring structure lead them to curate their lifestyle hacks online. And a really lovely part of that is everyone can watch. And so the hacking practices, starting off, of course, with the remixing. So again, decreasing that distance between producer and consumer, self-provisioning, and preferring non-expert help to the help of those market experts, as well as insourcing. So we have people helping each other with homework assignments, people tailoring, having informal kind of fuzzy exchanges as opposed to the exchanges in the efficiency of the market. And those authentic exchanges have taken privilege and taken precedence in lots of people's lives. This guerrilla tactics gets interesting. Since the financial downfall of 2008, both on the left and right of Main Street, people are frustrated with the consumer machine. And they're taking some really interesting tactics to show, perhaps, hipsterism, hacksterism, is patriotic. It is very reminiscent of Jeffersonian democracy. And forget about his beanie or his hat. Look at the practices and look at the way it has allowed us to relax our focus on the consumer marketplace. I'm developing a book proposal which will sample not only from urban hipsters who are homebrewing and who are curating their presentation online for others to view, but also rural stay-at-home moms. And so when thinking of our frustration with hipsters and their stylistic practices and their um, lazy-seeming outfits, one thing that we really have to focus on is the way that their politics of local production and consumption, as well as their emphasis on remixing, insourcing, and guerrilla tactics have truly allowed for a redistribution of wealth on the local scale.